Hello and welcome back, everybody. Episode three of Some Low Grade Gamers. As usual, Some Kind of Gaming is joined by the Low Grade Gamer for our little team up weekly podcast where we talk about games, gaming, and the world of video games. Dan, how you been this week? Not bad, not bad. What about you guys? Can't complain. Mm. Bit busy week in the day jobs, but busy as always. Yep. What what more can you ask for, really? Yeah. It means you're alive. <laughs> That's true. Yes. That's one way to yes, look at that, it. That, that would I'm mean alive. That. <laughs> the dead people tend to have a little bit less going on. I agree. I would, oh, have, thought, maybe, I would have thought. Maybe there's uh, a bit going on there in the afterlife that we don't know about. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's true. true. Yeah, yeah. That's true. We'll find out when we get there. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we'll discuss it on the afterlife podcast. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <we will. laughs> Done. All got a car cut at the same time, though. Yeah, true. true yeah. yeah. We are. We can organize that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that seems so, what, what, what's new in your world? What have you been playing this week? What's going on? How's what life? I- what have I Absolutely. been playing? That's a that's a good one. Um, so the last week I was talking about cloud gaming a lot and, and going into that and what I've been playing. This week uh, I have been doing a lot more with the website and the company. Oh. So we've just oh. actually moved into digital games. So we do oh. a lot of games from Steam and that sort of thing. So that was literally released like last night. So, so we're now able to purchase stream games through the low grade gamer. Correct. Uh, Steam, oh, nice. Origin, Rockstar, yep. and we've got a whole bunch more coming. But as an example, so what are the advantages there? Uh, we're, we're better. <laughs> no, nah, look, main like advantages it. is you've, you've basically got local support, whereas a lot of these other websites, uh, you don't have local support, you don't have access to somebody that you can say message on their website, email, call, whatever. With us, it's, yep. it's pretty simple. We can get things fixed up pretty easily as well. We have a very good relationship with this new supplier and we've got another one coming on board within the next seven days, I believe. So we've got a bit going on. Uh, so in saying that, I've been playing Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic because oh, yeah. yeah currently i gotta check the at number one i'm gonna start from the start i gotta check what the uh price is but at the moment they are very very low grade huh no hey, get it? <laughs> i see why you did that <laughs> i hey. like it yeah uh, you're playing the new the switch port no no just playing up on no. the computer so Steam oh, yeah, cool. Steam download Lovely. takes takes a couple of seconds. So basically, we send through the download code. I'm just mm-hmm. bringing up how much it cost because I don't remember. So Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic was where are you? Nine bucks. So laughing. Yeah, so we got that. So we got a few, few Star Wars games, um, Battlefield, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, available on the website right. now. So, oh, lovely! Star Wars fans, hit up the low grade gamer. Yeah, exactly. I've been, I've been smashing out Kotor. That's what I've been playing at the moment. Uh, just to basically, number one, we had to test to make sure that the back end system was working with the front end system so when somebody purchased it it automatically sends yep. them the download code and all of that sort of stuff plus the instructions on how to actually do it otherwise yeah it, it could be confusing for people so a lot of it <laughs> has been testing that for work purposes and then i also had uh, to put in another four hours of playing the game just to make sure the game worked that i like was, knowledge yeah. Isn't it such a hard life when you've got to play video games? I know. I just, I had to play it and I had to <laughs> do four hours. It's a dream, isn't just, it? Just to see what happened. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that, that's basically all I've been doing. I've been playing KOTOR, been having good fun nice. with that. 
I oh, have done a little bit of Halo and I have logged in every single day to see if Roland's there. <laughs> No, and there's, oh, there's no, no rolling. No, nah, so still oh, waiting on, on CD Project I say, Red. I think Cyberpunk is going to release an update sometime next year that might fix Roland. That's early the next word year. On the there's a uh, actually funny that not that we were sort of going to talk about Cyberpunk today because I, I've brought it up a few times, but uh, yeah, I think I think people are overhearing about it. I'm not going to lie. Yes, I don't. I don't blame them. But <laughs> I, I did want to I point out. Uh, do any threats this week <laughs> i did want to point out cyberpunk has actually moved into positive territory on steam in terms of their reviews oh, this is the first oh, time that they've actually had that so props to really? the developers for, even on steam yeah good on them so props to developers fixing up the pc version at least yeah uh, well, look at it's one at least they're doing something yeah yeah i mean it's good to know that the pc version is obviously at the stage that it is. So then that means the consoles can't be too far behind. Again, it's been more yeah, than a, a year. So it's still ridiculous, Look, but. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, wanna, no, 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 it's still, wanna, it's, it's, it was unfinished, right? It's like getting half a book and yeah. not knowing what Or a puzzle, the half a puzzle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we'll fix that with a patch later. Piece? All the time, it's always under the couch. And it's only one, it's only ever that one. That's because your cat That stole one it. rolling piece of the puzzle, and Damn he's just rolling. missing. It's probably going to be a really bad mission as well. <laughs> like it's yeah, going to yeah, probably won't even play be it. Worth it. No. Yeah, you'll play it and you'll be like, oh, all that waiting for this. It'll yeah. be totally average. It's so Look, near the start as well, and my play is so like pumped up. I'll just punk somebody <laughs> and it's going to be over. That's, that's <laughs> the depressing part. Uh, but with a bit of luck, when they introduce Roland, they won't then get rid of someone else because Roland <laughs> disappeared because of an update they made to something in the past, correct? Yes, yes, that is correct. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, as, I mean, if somebody does disappear, Don't do that again. I hope it's somebody that literally has no effect on me. So, I'll yes. be happy. Mm -hmm. That's some NPC in an alleyway somewhere would be very nice. That's that. That's the hope. That's the hope. But what about uh, what about you guys? Help. Laura, what have you been playing? Well, I've been playing some more Pokemon mm -hmm. and still going on Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Yeah, it's a long of one. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I've been playing heaps of free games this week. Free oh, Switch yeah. games. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Yes, that it will be our next YouTube, YouTube video. YouTube, yes. Yeah. yeah. So we've been doing a lot research. of game capture. And Do we get a research. sneak peek? Well, yeah, for sure. Uh -huh. Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It runs well on Switch. Do you play Fortnite, Dan? Look, you I, devil? Uh, I'm a bit too old. I reckon I my hands yeah, aren't I think that I like that, isn't it? I can't, I can't build things. That, oh, you got some kids yeah. on there; they're building and killing you at the same time, and I'm, I'm still just trying wow. to shoot. So, it's a whole yeah. different beast. It's a whole different beast. Yeah. Look, I mean, we, we mainly just put it on there because we would probably get a lot of hate if we didn't. And it doesn't run well on, which it looks well. It's, it is a great game. So Just not our game. Yes. Agreed. Yeah, no, but I, it is a great game. But it's, uh, but it's yeah. not a list of our, our favourite games. games. Yeah, yeah. It's just best free games on Switch. So we've been doing a lot of video capturing for stuff like that. Um, there's there's a lot of games on there that we've put 20, 30 hours into, so which is pretty cool. Like there's a uh, lot of addictions out there, there in is. that list. I remember a lot of when addictions. You at least had to buy a packet of cereal to get a free game. So you had to spend <laughs> five bucks on the cereal Some yeah. to get a free game. Yeah. And now they're just you could you could buy a console and never have to pay anything ever again yeah that's that's sort of ever. what we we're talking about in our first episode of yeah. how much choice there is now compared to oh. like when we were growing up i mean i still remember getting the super nintendo and it's like okay we pay x amount for a game and then yep. you finish the game because the games weren't that long oh not at yeah, all yeah no, no like spyros no. like 12 hours for like all three or something, isn't it? Or are they 12 each? Oh, 10 each or yeah. something. But yeah. like the original Metroid, you can smash through in like five hours, I mm -hmm. think. Well, even like if like, you bought a sports game, it's all over. 
<laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. yeah once, 100%. It's like super, I think it's super cricket on the Super Nintendo. Like once you hit the ball six times, like you've hit the ball six times. Like that's, yeah, exactly. Nothing, nothing else is happening. Quite repetitive. Mm. Yes. So, no, the choice now is amazing. Fortnite is a good game. I think yeah. they definitely set the foundation for games after it. Uh, Warzone, sure. I think, has had yep. huge success based off probably a migration of a lot of the older players potentially from Fortnite moving over to Warzone. Not that you can't be an older okay. player and play Fortnite, but no, Warzone no. has a much more realistic sort of vibe. So, yes. you know, a Definitely. lot of people yeah, moved yeah. over. Fortnite's like mm-hmm. uh, very oversaturated colours, bright, bubbly, that kind of. Yeah, it is It is appealing to the kids in all of us, which to yes. be honest is kind of more my style anyway. Like I prefer... Jack and Daxter to, I don't know, The Last of Us style style graphics. Just yeah, a naughty dog. I'm, I'm partial to both, to be honest. I think it just yeah. depends on the gameplay. For me- That's I, in the mood that you're in. Yeah, yeah exactly. It depends That's, what they're going for, isn't it? I think Fortnite is a, good, is a good game, but for me, I would definitely be heading- and If we're talking about the Battle Royales and that sort of thing, I think Apex runs really well on the Switch. I, would, I knew you would say Apex. <laughs> You're a big fan of Apex. Huge so fan we've, of Apex. We've had the opposite experience with Apex. It uh, doesn't run that well for us. Okay. A um, lot of drops in frame rates. Just looks muddy, especially when you compare it to any other version of the game. It's like night and day. Like Yeah. It, there's no comparison. It Whereas is significantly Fortnite, better on the Xbox. Yes. Exactly. Whereas, yeah, something like Fortnite or uh, DC Universe Online, something like that. I know that's an old game and that's probably yeah. why. But, yeah, they look, they're, they're comparable, you know? So Yeah, well, I think the base game of- included Apex on our list. Maybe for, it'll be in the next reason. list. Yeah, well, the, I think the base game of Fortnite has been around for a significantly long time. So I think it's a lot easier for them to do that migration. I mean, a lot of people are actually trying to push- Nintendo to put Warzone on the Switch, which I I think is a significantly bad idea because the Switch is not made to run those sorts of games that Nintendo aren't in that fight. They're not in that no, fight for that. power dominance. They're, no, they left that fight with the Wii. Yeah, mm-hmm. even then yep. it was a bit average. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, the GameCube compared to the Xbox and the PS2 mm. is still underpowered. So, and then they just gave up on it entirely. Yeah, and I think where they've gone now is a, is a significantly better choice, but I, I'm getting away from myself here. <laughs> yeah, of course. As usual. Yes, that's my thing. We should uh, we should give away a prize every time I do that. Oh, God. <laughs> I take a shot every time, but... Would yes. Yeah. Laura, Laura takes a shot every time. Yeah. Um, you can say goodbye to her from the podcast then. So yeah, nice that. knowing you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tom, what have you been oh. playing? Are we playing uh, the so same game? No, so, well, yes and no. There's a lot of uh, free play multiplayer games, obviously, so we do a lot of that together. But the best thing about having two of us is that we are able to play different games and combine them later on into a single video. Mm. So that's always quite nice. It makes our research go twice as fast. Yeah. Um, And all the game capturing and all that type of stuff as well. So that's pretty cool. But I'm still in my, I guess, free time, if you're going to call that work, then The Last of Us. I'm still on The Last of Us. Uh, Not that I've had much time. I think I've played maybe four hours of it this week or something like that. But, yeah, loving Loving it. I really like how Naughty Dog has grown up with their audience. Yeah. So we've we've talked about Jack and Daxter on on the podcast before and how amazing it was. And I was quite young when the first Jack and Daxter came out. And then it kind of got a bit more serious with Jack 2. A bit like Grand Theft Auto we inspired. Mm. And then Jack 3 as well. And then Uncharted was more mature again, more realistic graphics, all that type of stuff. And then The Last of Us is just pretty much a horror game. Uh, My heart was beating (laughs) real fast and I screamed a couple of (laughs) times. And 
said a couple of swears and like classic Tom stuff. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, f, <laughs> yeah. Oh my lord, there's oh, no. about to rip my face off. Great, <laughs> that old chestnut. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, been really enjoying that. That's cool, and it's free. Woo. P- PSN, free on the PSN for all PlayStation 5 members. Yay. <laughs> Have you guys in your research, is it Warf- Warframe? Is that what it's called? Yes. Yep. Is that is that going to be in the upcoming YouTube video? Uh, look, so there is 82 or is it 72 free apps on the Switch? There's so many. We yeah. tried all of them. For at least a while, um, because we like to be thorough, but it's pretty hard to knock that down to ten. Like there's definitely oh, yeah. a lot more than just ten. It good. might be a series, somewhat yeah. of a series. There'll okay. definitely yeah. at least be a second yeah. video, It'll- like our cozy games one. We mm-hmm. couldn't fit them all in one yeah. video either. So there's yeah, there will definitely be a sequel. And look, Warframe's good. It's just quite convoluted. Yeah. So. Um, I don't want to say we didn't have enough time because we did, but we didn't have enough time. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you're testing that that many games, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's- so we 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 tried to include ones that we already knew something from each genre. Like you know, we've got MMOs, battle royales, or all, all that type of stuff on there. So we tried to tried to do that. Plus, it's Nintendo, so there's some obvious, obvious ones, Pokemon, uh, <laughs> that that are going to be on there that you have to talk about. Yes. So, yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's what we've been up to this week. Yeah. Uh, YouTube research and stuff like that. Mm. Which I mean, ga- I game guess, testing. Go on, Tom. Yeah, I know. Right? It's, it's such a hard life. <laughs> no, well, it takes so long sometimes. Like, I... <laughs> Literally yeah. today. No, no, today was you. today was meant to be a testing day, right? We we're meant to test uh, multiple PlayStation Two games, multiple PS Three games. Now the day mm-hmm. definitely got away from me, but I yep. managed oh, to I test one game. I oh. Tested- oh, sweet! I love the Lego games. I they tested are. one game today. <laughs> so That's that, that, so fun. That is what I have done with my. With my day, I have tested. What did you reckon? It's Lego Indiana Jones for those people listening and not watching. Yes, sorry, I was showing up Indiana Jones. It's I was holding it. It's a I'm good game. I, I I think it's good fun. I I mean the Lego games aren't for me personally. But Fair enough. I think as a whole they're quite fun to play, and uh, it's really good that. In most of these Lego games, if not all of them, it's you can. No, I was going to show it on the back, but nobody could probably read that. They're all. Uh, I'm just showing it to the camera, but they're all two player games, basically, which is yeah, which is really cool that you can just jump in and do I that. Agree. I think yeah, they've, yeah. yeah, they've done it's a good underrated. job of doing that. So 100%. yes, I I'm like the. Just- to- humor in the lego games Mm -hmm. they're all really quirky they're all got a certain like yeah they're almost all the same game but based on different ips does that would you agree with that yeah yeah they're they're all like collectathons quirky humor same style of of humor and stuff like that and that's just like the story of indiana jones but with lego humor and characterization basically Mm. that's sort of why it's it's not for me how good's Lego? Yeah. Yes. It's like the, it's just like a different skin over top, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's exactly it. Yeah. That's, exactly it's, it. It, to me, it just sort of feels like the same game over and over. I do like yeah. the older ones, like the Indian Jones one that I just showed was actually quite fun to play. So, mm-hmm. well, think, are you a fan of Indiana Jones? Well, who isn't? My, I, don't, I don't know. I don't want to make any assumptions. No. <laughs> that's the thing. You've got to be a fan of, the IPs, don't you? No. Indiana Jones, well, you should just like it. <laughs> yeah, but if you didn't like it, then you wouldn't like yeah, the Lego no, if, game. If you, if you didn't like it, it'd be really hard. I mean, to be honest, I really like the Star Wars Lego stuff. I think that's really cool. You can say that. <laughs> yeah, you love Star Wars. I do, I'm a huge fan of Star Wars, but I sort of wish they did a real, not real life, but, you know, that style 
with the standard characters. I think that would be really cool because they did a game that was back on the PlayStation 1, and I can't remember what it was called now. I'm going to have to look it up. But yeah. it was similar in terms of, I mean, it didn't have that quirky thing, but you could yeah. be Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan as soon as oh. you left from the uh, cha- you know, the chamber at the start of the Phantom Menace where they tried to get gassed out by Newt Gunray and all that sort of stuff. So it, yep. it basically starts from there. And you oh, can cool. play two players. So one person's Qui-Gon, one person's oh, Obi-Wan. Cool. And the way they oh. do the camera work is very similar. I look, watch my hands going everywhere. If, <laughs> the, way, the way they do the camera work is very, very reminiscent of the Lego series. I'm actually going to look it up while one of you guys says something because yeah. well, I, I totally missed out on that title. Did you play that, Laura? No, I didn't get a chance to play that. Were you a fan of the Star Wars when you were younger? Mm, yeah, I was a fan of Star Wars when I was younger. I but will admit that I had only just watched all of the Star Wars films last year. I'm sorry. Yes, which is yeah, a problem. Then? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I apologize to myself first and foremost. I was missing, I didn't know what I was missing out on. And then I was like, oh my God, I've been missing out on so much. <laughs> and since then, I have read deep into the history and I know things that aren't even in the movies now. <laughs> I like it. Well, you've redeemed yourself. Exactly. Jedi, Jedi. power battles. Oh. Yes. Yeah. When I was young, like as we were saying before, when you only have like a couple games and then you play them to death. But um, does anyone remember like the demo games? Yes. And they would have like a whole bunch of like tiny snippets of other random games. There was this one in particular that I loved and it was just this like T-Rex simulator. But there was no like background or anything. Like it was just a black background. I'm pretty sure you couldn't walk anywhere. You could just like move around in a circle. (laughs) And chomp and stuff. Yeah, you could chomp and stuff. I'll have to look it up and put it on the Discord. Yeah, man, I loved that. (laughs) I loved it. T Rex simulator. That's great. I mean, some of these games for really me it was children. I oh, know. For, for me it was that <laughs> Star Wars game at, for on the play, PlayStation One anyway. Star Wars, yep. Jackie Chan, and Road Rash 3D. Those were the three PlayStation One games. The that trifecta. I, yeah, I really resonated with, and we spent because you could sort of do them two player. They were a lot, you know. A lot of people rocked up to our house to play that yeah. game. Yeah, I'd make down the road, fun. you know, my brother, all that sort of thing. So we hammered them out pretty hard, especially yeah, the Star nice. Wars one because you could play two player. That uh, that was great. Nice. I'm gonna go. Play I that had, later. I think it was a Matchbox game. I think it was like you could, you it was a racer, but then you'd go through like a ring and you'd change into a plane and then you go through a ring and change into a boat. I think it was Matchbox, yeah. but I could be completely wrong. That sounds yeah. cool. I, yeah. like I remember that. Yeah, it was awesome. It was like way beyond its time for, for its time frame. And then Crash and Crash Team Racing. Yeah. Mm. Spyro for me too. Yeah, yeah, totally. See, my- oh, again- Abe's Odyssey. Ooh. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, my- and see, my-, my cousin was very lucky. He had 280 games, I think. So, oh, my God. Lucky. Yeah, I know. What? Ridiculous. Um, what? Because his parents were really nice or because he was an older kid at the time? No, he's, he's younger than me. So, so his parents were really nice. Well, parents did a bit of a naughty and did a mod chip. So. Oh, ooh, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. I don't advocate for that. Go buy all that. your games from the low-grade gamer instead. Exactly, I don't advocate. <laughs> I don't advocate for stealing uh, IP, especially when it's uh, current anything. current generation. If that makes sense, if you can buy it off yep. the shelf, I don't advocate for it because that money does need to go. Oh, number one, into the economy, into the developers, and all the yep. other bits and pieces. Because the less oh, something the sells, the line of people that need to be paid. Yeah, exactly. I do think, though, if a game, and I know I'm going off topic again, I do think if a game has been around for X amount of years and is not available commercially, uh, personally, I don't have an issue with it. Fair enough. 
I I mean, look, if, if it's ridiculously hard to find and it's going to cost you $1,000 for a game that you might not even like or you don't know is even good, then, yeah, I mean, I've used emulators before. Let's just put it that way. Mm. That's... <laughs> It's just it, it's just part of the industry these days, unfortunately. But I also completely understand when someone like Nintendo, who are notorious for it, mm. come along and they're like, "No, you can't do that." It's totally fair. Like you can't. You, yeah. You, you sh- it's it's pirating. It's 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 illegal. So yeah, I I totally understand both sides of the coin. You know. Yeah, I, d- I definitely think it's fair. I also think that. If you are going to hammer people that hard, though, you should provide options. Mm. Okay. That's- well, a lot of the um, a lot of them are just like inaccessible these days. I think that's what Nintendo's doing at the moment with their NES and SNES online services. Yeah, that's great for that. Yep. And what they did with the virtual consoles on the Wii and the Wii U and stuff like that was their games are all accessible, so there's no need for emulators for those in, in ones, their yeah. mind o- hopefully this. they bring the game boy games and stuff to the online yeah, yeah I was, that, I was that would... just about to bring bring up something similar i know i know we haven't uh it's not on the agenda for today but that's all right we can just we can, uh, agenda yeah you just spark something and it's something Please. that i have been reading a lot on reddit and facebook groups yeah. and other bits and pieces especially when the 64 stuff came out. So okay. are you a hole. <laughs> pro subscription model or would you prefer virtual console? Um, I like both ways. I'm, I'm honestly not bothered, to be honest. I don't know. How do you feel? Yeah, well, I would have the Nintendo Online subscription anyway. Hmm. Because, like, I obviously want to play games online. So I guess it's cool that I get games as well. And with this new one that came out, um, I was going to buy the Animal Crossing DLC anyway. So I guess that that kind of made it way more worthwhile for me because, yeah, I was going to buy that anyway. But maybe it would be a bit of a jump if you weren't going to buy it. Spend the like 30, was it 30 or 30, 30 or 40 dollars for the Animal mm. Crossing DLC? Yeah, something. So I, yeah, I wasn't really bothered. I was like, yeah, sweet. Yeah, something that Nintendo did. (laughs) Yeah, that's the thing. We would get it either way. So Nintendo has our money. What about what about you? How do you feel? Well, see, I'm up in the air. I don't mind the subscription model. I think a lot of companies have gone that way. I think. Yeah, exactly. The other problem. Yes, which I think is a problem too, because oh, I agree. You can't. Programs like computer programs, yeah. downloading our video editing software, Adobe Premiere and Adobe Rush, like their subscription services nowadays. I just want to pay four hundred dollars or three hundred dollars or whatever it was, and have it and have it there forever. Yeah. I don't want to pay thirty dollars a month, and then in three years I've spent like over a thousand dollars. Like that's way more than the program initially cost. And I'll probably have it for 10 years. So they're getting like, it's a smart business model on their behalf, but it's yeah. a bit anti-consumer in a way, isn't it? It's it's great if you only want Premiere for one project or, or you only want uh, antivirus software for one month. I don't, I don't know why you would, but but yeah, it's, it's a bit anti-consumer. Yeah, I, I think... Part of the problem, I mean, you got, if you have a look at a general person and, and their subscription services, as an example, pretty much everybody mm-hmm. has Netflix. So Netflix is on yep. there. It's safe to say. Amazon are pushing into everybody's homes quite heavily. I mean, for six yeah, ninety nine, you get Prime, which has video, music. You also get a bunch of Prime gaming loot as well so if you log into prime gaming you can get heaps of different stuff there's a whole bunch of stuff on there now so if you do have amazon prime you didn't know that guys jump on there's heaps of loot available at the moment that you just claim and twitch and you sub. Get. i was gonna say that yeah free, you get a free sub free twitch sub to some yes. kind of gaming ah. that's true yeah you get to use your, your sub for some kind of gaming that's the only 
<laughs> Twitch channel you are allowed to subscribe to. But the only one that yeah, they offer. The only Sorry, one. Sorry. Yeah, the rest so, of them aren't allowed. <laughs> no good. No good. No, I can't say that. I've got other affiliates. <laughs> 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 On this podcast I can. But uh, <laughs> the I think the problem with it is exactly what you were saying. It's like if you're trying to say, for example, you're you're a new content creator, you're trying to push into the market. Like it's that is so expensive to go with Adobe to mm -hmm. try and create. Now your your content, as I've expressed in the past, I think is fantastic. I think it is definitely above your station uh, of what you guys are producing. With Adobe, you're there, you know, partly because Adobe is a is a good software. You know, not to take anything yep, away from exactly. what you guys do because you're quite no, no, no. quite artistic. Hard, hardware and software are equally as important mm -hmm. as the people creating it. Exactly. So, um, we, I mean, we use uh, Wondershare Filmora, and that's because I got a lifetime uh, subscription for basically oh, nothing. Nice. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with Always that. Nice. So, but that's one thing that I think is a problem with the Nintendo system is that if you can only get Zelda Ocarina of Time on this $60 a year or whatever it is, I can't even remember now, 50 something, maybe 59 99 No, it's gone up. Whatever it is. Yeah, 60 sounds right. So if you can only get it on that, say Nintendo cut off the service, mm -hmm. can I then not play Zelda Ocarina of Time anymore? And the answer to that is no, you cannot. To me, that That's is an it. issue. Yes, I 100% agree. But that's an issue with digital gaming full stop. I don't know if anyone knows about what happened with Scott Pilgrim versus the world, the video game. Yes. Yes. So it was a digital only game and it got taken down. It got taken off of everywhere. You could no longer get the game. And there was such hype behind it when it came to Switch. I actually got... Got it for Laura for Valentine's Day this year. Oh, that's nice cute. For me there. Yeah, yeah nice one. Scott Pilgrim. <laughs> so romantic. And I know, right? <laughs> Starts off with a love heart and everything. It's pretty cool. <laughs> but uh, there was so much hype behind it coming back because it was just unavailable mm. for years mm. and years. And then Super Rare Games, who are an awesome website if anybody wants to check them out, they take digital only games and release physical versions of them. So also limited run games, also a really, really good one. Uh, it might've been limited run games. Sorry. Anyways, one of the two then released a physical version of it. And now we finally have Scott Pilgrim in our hands. We're mm -hmm. able to hold that game and have it forever and definitively have it forever because you, you just couldn't. Yeah. It's sad when there's a game available digitally and then it gets taken down uh jump force is a big one as well yep. that's getting taken down soon jump force for those of you that don't know is a big shonen jump is basically the manga producer in japan weekly books it's what dragon ball comes out in one piece all of that so they just joined all their ips into a fighter so you can make yugi from Yu-Gi-Oh and his dark magician fight goku which is awesome, very cool, but it's disappearing because there's so much issues with the licensing and stuff like that. So online play is going to be gone uh, middle of next year, I believe, and the game is going to be taken off all the stores. So if you hmm. want to buy Jump Force, do it now. Get it for Christmas. Yeah, How great is it, though, that the Grand Theft Auto games – you can get them again now. Oh, true. Yes. That's another mm -hmm. issue. Yeah, go on. Explain the situation. Yeah, well, when they released the um, this new trilogy, they made it so that you were unable to buy the original games. And obviously there was um, some mixed reviews mm -hmm. upon the release of the trilogy. And um, people bullshit. were really upset that you could no longer get... <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that you could no longer get the original versions because they sort of made them worse. Mm -hmm. They did. They did make them worse. And but they did. It's a cash grab. Anti-consumerism, isn't it? Mm. We want you to spend money on these new trilogy so you can't have the originals. Yeah, but sadly they were worse. But they have 
answered people's prayers and brought mm, them back. Yeah, Dan, do would you like to explain what Rockstar Studios is currently doing in that? Yeah, so area? after after all of the sort of hullabaloo, is that the word I want? Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. I like it. I've yeah. heard that word since I was five. Yeah, yeah I like it. <laughs> so ever, ever since that, with all the issues in terms of the uh, clouding and the other bits and pieces, the fact that the, it was glitching like you wouldn't believe, all those other bits and pieces, Rockstar have now come out and said, look, we stuffed up. Anybody who has bought the trilogy for Switch, blah, 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 whatever it may be, will have access to the games from Rockstar Direct, the original. So all three originals will be given to people via Rockstar access basically which is pretty cool at the same time oh, some people may not have a computer so i can understand why there's yeah, still exactly. a little bit of backlash but at the I'd end of the day users. yeah i mean what were rockstar gonna do though no, they've no. definitely tried haven't they so oh. you can't no I, yeah. you can't knock them no yeah. like shame on them for releasing a bad game to begin with absolutely totally fair i, I they deserve the backlash but also good on them for at least doing something. Mm. And relatively Prime. quickly. That yeah. too. Yes, exactly. What? It's only been two weeks yeah, since it's, it's been released. It's been I such think they a, announced it's last week. Yeah, it's, it's been such a short, short period of time in, into when they actually responded compared to another company who is missing a butcher. But... Mm. I think that's that was key because I didn't expect that from Rockstar. I honestly expected this to be like an ongoing long-term issue 100%. and a fight, considering we are still pushing for GTA 6. When the hell is it coming? And why the hell are we still <laughs> playing gonna, GTA 5? Stop dude, playing it. Just GTA 5 to the PlayStation 10 at this yeah. stage. <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to happen. I don't understand how that game is still going. It, it's for me, still, it's always on the list of highest selling games every month, especially at the PlayStation Store. I don't understand it. It is how many times can you people play this? It's boring. <laughs> I, I, I don't get it either, but that's that's what they're doing. I look, I I understand. It's the same thing with Mario Kart. People have been pushing for a new Mario Kart ever since it was released, but. Just sells so well. Nintendo keeps selling units. Rockstar mm. keeps selling units. That's why there's been no Minecraft 2. Microsoft keeps selling units. So Minecraft 2. Yeah, right. Yeah, that wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. So, <laughs> so I like I get it. That why would they release something when they're still selling a shitload of, of the old ones? Yeah, I guess they'll I, wait I just, for the sales to drop and then pick them back up again with a second one. That I just don't understand. That's my thing. I don't get it. I don't I don't get why it's still <laughs> selling so well. Like, don't get me wrong, it was a fun game ten years ago. Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah. But compared that to That was ten years ago and we've played it and we can all move on with our lives and play number six now, please. Maybe it's yes. the nostalgia. What about, gets, yeah, what about right Skyrim though? Is that was that released before GTA five? Skyrim's oh. a little bit different though, isn't it? Is it? It's still being ported to every console under the sun. I swear yeah. that game came out on the PS1. <laughs> <laughs> Look, S Skyrim. I played it on the NES. I swear. <laughs> Skyrim, I, I, I agree as well. But to me, Skyrim feels like a much more significant game than GTA. It more, is. Yeah. There's more to it. You could mm. possibly play that for 10 years and still not do everything. It's yeah, it's definitely more robust. Whereas GTA Five, there's only so many times you can crash a plane into a mountain. Mm. You know, <laughs> that's all yeah. I do. Um, but you know, that's, that's there's only so many times you can do that. And I think, I mean, let's play new games, guys. I mean, I, I play Valhalla as well. I haven't played the new DLC, the Paris DLC. I have not played that yet. I have heard there's okay. more coming out as well. You I don't play know the Druid I, DLC. The yeah, Island I played one? that. No, I've done that one. Cool. Yeah, Laura's not up to any of the DLC yet. No. Yeah, I just and haven't just done. I haven't done Paris yet. I was hoping. Uh, I was hoping to do it shortly, but with 
everything going on with the business and the other bits and pieces. Sometimes mm -hmm. my gaming has to take a back seat. I haven't even been able to. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, I haven't been able to play Halo Infinite that much either, which is a disappointment. Yeah. I can't wait till the Christmas break. Not because I can go away or not because I can see my family. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I'm looking forward to those things, but I just Maybe want not. to play more video games. You just, you I just want, want to finally finish games. this older DLC. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right? It's been how long? I'm almost, almost up to um, the Trials of the Sword. Of oh, the Sword. I'm up yeah. to the last, yeah, the last Divine Beast. I'd, I'd like so to, definitely. I'd like your, how, I'd like you to try doing the no clip just to see how no. easy it is. Cause you can redo it. If you, you can redo the trial, even if you pass it. So I'd mm -hmm. like, to, I, I'd, I think it'd be funny to see if you try and do the no clip cheat. Just look it up on, on YouTube to see how you do it and see okay, if you yeah. can actually make it happen. Because like I said, I got outside. So you go outside and it's literally like green nothingness with some yeah. random water and other bits and pieces <laughs> like floating and you're yeah. running around the outside of the map. I couldn't get back in though. That was my problem is I couldn't get back in to finish. So Could not find the secret entrance. Yes. See if see see how you go. Maybe I'll try do it on stream. Oh, yes. yes, that'll be good. Don't but be careful because free Amazon Twitch sub to <laughs> yeah. check out yeah. the Laura's no clip challenge. Yeah. Check out the no clip challenge. No clip challenge <laughs> is a good one. I like that. Yeah, yeah. A... We'll put that on the schedule. <laughs> Speaking of the switch. The yes. investors, uh, investor. yeah, the investor meeting, yeah, it happened. I think we are a bit late to the party in this one. It happened in our debut podcast. It happened that week, I'm pretty sure. So, two or three weeks ago now, uh, we've had a lot of t to talk about since then. So, why not get onto it now? Um, they basically had a meeting with all their investors, as big companies do, and said, "Yes, we will be releasing a new system." I Sometime don't... this century. 20XX, they said, <laughs> which is actually, if we can just get off topic a bit here for a second, why is it that's, that- uh, Hold on, that's my thing. Ah, oh. <laughs> nah, I'm stealing roll it from reversal. you. Yeah, a bit of roll reversal <laughs> never hurt. <laughs> why in every generation of consoles do people insist it's going to be the last? It doesn't make any sense. Like, the PS2 was meant to be the last great big console. The PS3 was definitely the last one. Like, there was de de definitely never going to be a PS5. It happens every generation. Does yeah, anyone have an answer does. for me? No. Well, of course there's going to be another big console that comes out. There's always going to be another big console that comes out for the rest of forever. That's my... I have a I have a thought Ribbon. on this. Yeah, please, yeah. please. That's what we're in the podcast for. Thoughts. And what I what I think will happen in the next generation mm. is you will be delivered a box. Yep. And that box will be empty. And yep. all that box is going to be able to do is connect to the internet and have a have a basic my, uh, interface. And everything else is going to be cloud. Okay. Yeah. Cloud gaming is the way of the future. Because if, if you think about it, how, how long did it take between PS4 and PS5? It was like eight years, maybe longer. Yeah. I'm actually, eight, eight sounds about, wait, 2013 or 14 was the PS4. 2014, I believe. Yeah. So, so yeah, eight years. No, seven years. Seven. So we got a significant amount of time there. By the time yeah. something else comes of it, I think I think cloud gaming is where they're going to go, especially you can see Microsoft pushing towards it. And the fact that they lose money on the consoles, I think, is the key here. Yeah, true. That's a big thing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, if you look at, say, Apple as an example, right, because a lot of people are talking about Apple releasing a gaming console, yada, yada, yada. That's never going to happen. 
the main Hope reason well, it, it won't because Apple is very hardware focused. Yes, they they work on their software and all, all of those sorts of things. And everybody's got their own opinion on whether they are in the Apple camp or they're not in the Apple camp, all those sorts of things. But Apple make a significant amount of their profit off of their, sa- their device sales versus mm-hmm. Microsoft, Sony, blah, 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 who do lose money on the consoles to make money on the games. So yes. I think what we're going to see is they'll start selling those consoles for, say, $300. But mm-hmm. maybe the bits and pieces that are inside those consoles are $50, 60 Does that... Does that make sense? So basically there's going to be a HDMI connection. There's going to be a controller, which is probably going to be the most expensive part and yes. everything else is going to be cloud-based. So that way they can manage their own servers. They can do everything they want to do. If there's an upgrade, they could then potentially charge people for that upgrade because I think, and you can see Microsoft doing it already. Yep. And and as we were talking about earlier, this monthly subscription model is going to hit consoles harder than we think. That is my prediction. And if I'm right in seven years, everybody listening to this podcast owes me $10. Oh. So, <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, we all I'll, have to take a shot. I'll give you 10 bucks. <laughs> but that, that's... That's what I've been thinking about a lot, especially running a, a business as I as I do. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you think about it more than most people would, I'm sure. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where it's like, okay, so what do we do in seven years? Where's the business going to be in in seven years? If they do go down this avenue, what are we focusing on? Are we focusing yeah, on what does the model look like? audio, controllers, yada, 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 whatever, whatever that may be? That's where I think they're going to go, and that's – but – I don't think Nintendo will. Okay. Mm. Look, I so we have already had this HDMI connection dongle and a controller in the form of Google Stadia. I don't know if anybody remembers their five minutes of fame. Mm. Google Stadia, anyone? Yep. No, nope, didn't think so. Yeah, it went, came in, went pretty fast. And they were the first cloud service gaming console, I guess you could say. Did they just hit it too early? They hit it Did too early hit and wrong platform. Or, yeah. yeah, maybe the world just wasn't ready for Google Stadia. I think they, the hardware and the software wasn't ready for Google Stadia. Mm-hmm. They had the problem. Part of the problem was is they used Chrome, Chromecast devices and other bits mm-hmm. and pieces to actually be able to, to do this. Now, part of that problem is you do need some processing power here. Plus, we need higher speeds. Now, historically... Google stuff really only connects to 2.4 gigahertz network. Most of it is not Ethernet, if, if you know, Chromebooks and et cetera are. But if we're talking about Chromecast and that sort of thing, what people would have easy access to, they're not Ethernet based. They're 2.4 gigahertz, which is even worse. Yes, it is plus, a problem. They hit it too early. Plus, they didn't open it up to multiple markets. They opened it up to one market, basically. And that's all they focused on, which was a problem. Wait, what do you mean by one market? Well, it's not available in Australia, as an example. Oh, there you go. I didn't even know that. <laughs> no, it's Google Stadia. I, I never is, wanted one, so I is, didn't look at yeah. it. <laughs> no, it, it's basically US based only. Oh, okay. Yeah. So okay. Well, that's dumb. That's, oh, that's, that's your dumb. first mistake, isn't it? That's one. That's one problem. Now, the US is a big market, so don't get me wrong. But oh, oh, for sure. They started creating. AAA titles as well. They started a company to do that. Then they did. Yeah, they did. Then they folded that basically. Yeah, and that's too that's early. Google's problem gave it a go. with absolutely everything that they do. It's fire every single cannon they have. Give it a go for about ten minutes, and then go. Nah, yeah, nah. Work. We're not selling enough people's data here. Let's change. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> yes. No, I do like Google. I'm a fan of Google. Oh, um, I agree. But, but the, the stadia just doesn't interest me. Yeah, I I think it just came out too soon. Like if you yep. if you play GeForce uh, as an example, powered by Pentanet, whatever the, the whole name is, I don't know. The name was a bit convoluted for me. By Nvidia, they yep. had 
and still do because it is a fantastic system. They've got a good system going, and that's what's making me think more and more. Like you got to think about it as well. Macs at the moment, if we have a look at, at Mac computers, you can buy a Mac. What is it? A Mac Pro for up yep. to fifty four thousand dollars. So you can wow. buy that. That's, uh, that's well, what we were. And it still can't game. Yeah, wow. That's so, so I, we did great. not spend that much money on our computer. No. That's for sure. <laughs> so I, I think part of the thing is with, with this cloud gaming stuff is you've got places like GeForce, which have literally made a, an application that works on the Mac and you can play any Windows title basically, anything Very, related, related through Steam and all that other stuff. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And obviously it'll, it'll expand in time. So that's where I think we're going to go. But again, I still don't think Nintendo are going to do that. I don't, I, I still feel Nintendo's whole thing is hardware innovation. It is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It is 100%. And they've been, as we said, they've been doing that since the, since the Wii, the Wii was their first real big hardware innovation um, thing, I guess, whatever you want to call it. 100%. So I, would, I'd, I think if Nintendo might eventually get there, like they eventually went into high definition and they will hopefully eventually get into 4K. Yeah. Uh, fingers crossed, yeah. <laughs> That's what we all want. But I, they'll definitely be the last. If they're going to do it, they'll be yeah. the last ones to do it for sure, hundred percent. And I so think that could make a break. Counter argument, my counter argument to you, Dan, is what about the people like myself, specifically, way more so than Laura, who are physical gamers and physical collectors. For those of you watching this, here's just a small part of our Switch games, all through here, and some memorabilia. There's more in other rooms and all that type of jazz. Yeah, so I what's... recently made a purchase of a game. It cost me $130 on eBay. I could have downloaded it on the Switch eShop for 15 but I wanted the physical. And I spent an extra $115, $110 on getting that physical package. I'm, I'm going to open it. I'm going to play it. It's not just to collect and have and mm. sell on later. I, I want it. So is that where Nintendo's going to focus their market on? Or is there going to be a special collector's edition of the PlayStation 8 or whatever it might be? No, you'll, you you'll be done and dusted. Oh, well, I'm just going to go. There's, there's <laughs> physical collectors are going to be a thing. Thanos oh. snap, mate. Thanos yeah. snap. <laughs> oh, no. This no. stuff from yeah. the players to, uh, from the, pit, what I called it? A players two. I, from I the, don't know what you were going for there. PlayStation <laughs> 2 uh, and such, Super Nintendo, original Nintendo, even all the way up to the PlayStation 5, I think will become collector's items because- They'll be like videotapes. VHS. Yeah. That's that's but, where I that's where I see things going. You have a look. Even the National Broadband Network, which is an absolute nightmare, the, mm -hmm. even they've started to upgrade people that were that were fibre to the node. Now, for those of you that don't know, the node is say three kilometers from somewhere someone's house, and it's mm -hmm. fibre all the way up until that point. After that point, they use generally Telstra's old copper network to deliver uh, internet speeds to your house. Now, a lot of those fiber to the node customers are actually being upgraded to fiber to the property. So once that continues to happen on an ongoing basis, and now that hap that'll happen before eight years is up, nine years is up. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Maybe. Hopefully. So yeah, Australia <laughs> has notoriously slow internet speeds. Mm -hmm. Yes. But once that, that sort of thing is going to continue to increase and get better, and if you have a look at it, places like TPG, Aussie Broadband, they're creating their own networks as it is. So they're, they're just doing their own stuff. And actually, completely off topic, sort of, there was some guys uh, out bush that could not get internet, so they made their own network. 
They just made they just, it. They just it's attached awesome. to something that was there and just went with it. Bloody legend. So that, they oh, ran fiber yes. for kilometers, apparently, to get that internet. Awesome. Yes. It, there was an article about it Sorry, years ago. Sorry, that's awesome. Should. Even the upgrading from fiber to the node, you can actually get a quote now direct from the MBN. You can yep. get a quote that will, that is, I'm going to say reasonable because mm -hmm. of a particular reason I'll explain in a minute. You can now jump on and get that quote if you want to force it early. Now, the last time I did a check of a fiber to the node property yep. and a fiber to the curb, they were around $2,000 to do that upgrade, which, okay. which if you're the owner of the house, that's, yep. that's reasonable. Definitely. You know, if you're renting, obviously you're not going to spend $2,000 on somebody else's thing, but that's Try reasonable. Landlord into doing that renters. Maybe. Tell them you need it. Good luck. Previous to that, it was in excess of 20,000. Oh, so that's why yep. I say it's reasonable. The, the price has come down significantly. They got more people working on the network than ever before. Now, I am not an advocate for the MBN. Yeah, I think yeah, there's a there's a lot of better options. That's Look, for sure. I'll get even five G. You see where the MM wave say, stuff is going? That that is like seriously low latency. I said that back in when they were unveiling the NBN. Wireless technology is the way of the future. And I know that us being gamers and Ethernet ports and they're all, it's all super important and why it is always better for now. Mm. Technology is just growing at an exponential rate. Mm. Uh, Elon Musk is classic Elon. He's always at the forefront of everything. His Tesla has now got things in the sky that we call, what do we call them? Satellite. That's the one. <laughs> when are you guys telling me that I'm the one that knows the words? Yeah. Last week? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nah. Awkward. We're, we're really not role reversing this week, are we? I like it. <laughs> it's nice, a bit fresh. Things in the sky. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, things, the sky things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, yeah, that are producing internet. Yes, I these think Starlink satellites. Uh, yeah. but their, their problem as well is they, they have a lot of issues in terms of they need direct line of sight, uh, 50 oh, look, megabits per second, all those sorts of things. So hundreds of issues and there will continue to be, but we should have invested into research into that before we invested God knows how much money into rolling fiber optic cables across like one of the largest countries on the planet. Well, one of the things they did very poorly is uh, number one, they, they underquoted. Number two, they should have done fiber to the property from the get-go if they were going to do mm -hmm. any type of um, upgrade because at the end of the day, MBN probably spent half their time trying to fix copper cables. Makes no sense. Really oh. stupid. Number no, two, no, no. If, if you have a look at 5G, especially the MM Wave stuff, th they're literally doing operations using 5G operations on something like they got a person open on the desk on the op not desk if if you're getting operated on a desk that's just shit's bad <laughs> yeah. don't do it probably has something to do with roland's butcher i don't know <laughs> just, just that's avoid what it. he's doing oh, <laughs> yeah, he's off doing warehouse operations. operations but you know like they've, they've literally got people on the operating table being operated through 5g yeah. Wow, yeah, which crazy. is which is absolutely insane, and mm -hmm. I I think that's where things are going to go. I mean, you're having a look at self driving cars and this and that and this. Like Tesla. technology is 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 <laughs> seriously so amazing at how quick things are moving. Oh, it is. I was talking to my parents about this uh, the other day. So my dad turned seventy next year. And the stuff he's seen in his lifetime is ridiculous. Like he he does not remember mobile phones and all that type of stuff as a kid. He saw oh, the moon right, landing. Yeah. He remembers watching something on television in color for the first time. Like these these were huge events. Yeah. Rise and fall of Blockbuster. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, right, exactly. And a lot of these things only last 10 years, you know. Like, even when it comes to gaming, like, look at the old Atari, the original Atari. It's not that old mm. in the grand scheme of in things. In the grand scheme of things, it's for really sure. not. I know it feels old to all of us. Uh, it's older than I am, but I'm not that old, I like to think. No, I'm not that old. <laughs> You're definitely not that old. <laughs> so it's. There is yeah, also a new Atari, though. So, is there? Ooh. The Atari VCS. Oh, okie dokie. There you go. I'm talking about the OG Atari. Yeah, I know. I know. I just had to put. <laughs> just had to. Just had to flex. <laughs> what? Sorry. What was yeah, what was that? <laughs> that was an interesting Choice. movement. For those at home, we might have to beep that one out. <laughs> Again, black screen, black screen. Tom, Tom, Tom the inappropriate. Clear out that movement. Oh God, I got to stop being inappropriate on this podcast. <laughs> the, the, look, I think getting back to the N- Nintendo investor thing. Oh yes, sorry, bit off topic there. Yes, obviously we go off, but I think it all sort of is is pretty cohesive in, in what we're talking about. The next Nintendo console, I really hope isn't too far away i think they do need a bit of a refresh and an upgrade they can't do anything too soon because they're going to piss oled customers off Mm -hmm. but i think they need to do something relatively soon and what they should do is not include docks so that you should be able to buy the switch without a dock to save money and i and i have a feeling that is partially their plan because it has been proven that the new switch dock for the OLED can actually run 4K upscaling. Yes. So yeah. Yeah. why the hell is that if the console itself can't do it? Yet. Mm, Apparently yes. it can't do it at all. Okay, so the hardware is just... The hardware just will not even allow it to it. upscale. So... Okay. But... The dock has that ability to assist. Yeah, the dock. The dock has the hardware. So, mm. I just find it very, very interesting. And it's the same thing with like you buy a new iPhone as an example, or a new uh, Samsung device. No more charger. Yes. Yeah. And I th- exactly. That's where I see Nintendo going. I don't I know. I still have wired headphones, man. I'm still upset that there's no. Headphone jack and phones anymore. I want my headphone jack back. I lose those little earbuds, man. <laughs> on that, I lost mine on the weekend. Did yeah, you? See? Oh. I couldn't find my beanie or my jumper this morning, let alone my earbuds. Yes. I've got I would hate got no to hope. see him with a pair of earbuds. Yeah, Laura I, knows. I've literally. I've literally just been watching them because you can watch them on the, on the Find My iPhone app. Oh, you've got a little fine thing. Yeah, I'll but find because, my buds. Yeah, because the, the <laughs> yes, but because the uh, the uh, earbuds or AirPod, whatever they're called, I'm t- not yeah, just, uh, too old for this. The AirPods know, right? don't have GPS in them. It's not exact coordinates. So what I think's happening is they've potentially fallen out and ended up on the road somehow. So it, when people drive past, they're getting pinged from that Bluetooth. Oh, oh, cool. Right. I like that. <laughs> that's, that's how the Apple network works in terms of find my yeah. iPhone. Mm-hmm. Is It's based on how many devices are active in the area. And I think it's something like one, one something billion iPhone devices or Apple devices are working on the find my iPhone network. And wow. yeah, that's again, I've gone off topic. Somebody control me. <laughs> Somebody stop me. <laughs> We're reeling him back in, everyone. We're reeling him back, back in. in. Mm-hmm. So I hope, <laughs> I hope that the new Nintendo system is somewhat similar to the Switch. I want to see something yeah. like they did. Uh, I, I don't, it's a point of contention whether the revision or the next console after the Game Boy was the Game Boy Color or if that was just a revision of the Game Boy or if it was the Game Boy Advance. Either way, I want to see something similar. So just a update in terms of hardware and what the thing can do rather than an update in gimmicks. 
I'd like it. I would still like to see it handheld and a hybrid console. Yes, That's, I think yeah. the hybrid model is working very well for them. That's why it's my favorite system 100%. because, yeah, like the graphics just don't really compare to a lot of the power doesn't really compare to any, like most other consoles. Mm. But I love being able to play it in bed. I love being able to play it when you're doing a poop. Oh, man, the amount of times I've been, like, playing it's on priceless. the TV and I'm like, oh, wait, need a poo, get up, grab grab my Switch. And <laughs> grab then- the Switch. <laughs> yeah, man, it's not it. like you're playing an online game and then you're like, sorry, everyone, got to poop. <laughs> <laughs> Multitasking. Yep, you can continue to. <laughs> Honestly, that experience is priceless. Mm-hmm. Oh, I would be willing to pay double what they're asking for the Switch just for that experience. <laughs> that could right, be their I new tagline. <laughs> yeah, play while you poop. Play while you poop. <laughs> Nintendo, hire us. <laughs> we'll write you good tagline. Some kind of marketing. We'll start new business. Yeah. Oh, God. It's crying over here, everyone. Uh, yeah. I do think... <laughs> With the next Switch release, that it needs to use at least the OLED dock as a bare minimum. I think the docking stations need to be interchangeable. And if they don't do that, I think it's going to shoot them in the foot. It'll piss people off like me, as an example, who does have two docks. So I can play it near my computer or I can play it at the office. I got three docks. And then on the the lounge TV, forget about that. Nice. So, yep. Yeah, I, I, I think if they don't do that, I think they've missed the mark. So you want the new console to be backwards compatible with the hardware from the old console? With the so dock. That's why the only. dock is 4K, I reckon. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is something I never even considered before. I'm glad we had this conversation. Mm. I think that's why, yeah, the new dock is capable of 4K. Okay. I mean, it yeah, has if, to be. If yeah. the Switch isn't capable of, if the Switch OLED isn't, like doesn't have the ability to be upgraded to 4K, then it has to be for the next one. Mm. Or else why would they spend the extra money putting no, it in there, yeah, right? right? Yeah, Nintendo doesn't like to spend money when they don't have to. So 100%. I agree with both of they you. They just would have changed the case of the old one. But yeah. No, yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not certain because, I mean, if you pull all the case away from the dock, the dock is the A B. Yeah. It's really, it's really quite small. All the hardware inside that thing, it's really, really small, uh, tiny. I would say small and tiny at the same time. Sminy, really, really it's very sminy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's really sminy. So, I feel like there's a lot more they could do. I don't know. I'm not the biggest tech nerd in the world. I, I'm no the low grade gamer. He, I'm sure he would know more than I would. But surely there's something else they could put in there to, I don't know, upscaling or whatever it might be inside this dock to make the system more powerful and then have the less powerful version handheld. Because let's be honest, you don't need a 4K screen on a screen the size of the Switch. It's a little bit pointless. They, they do upscaling screen. now to 1080 though. Yes, they do. They do upscale to 1080, 100%. So, uh, um, yeah, sorry, go on. So I think uh, I think what they're doing is it, they're future-proofing it. I don't – I from my understanding and from what I've read, the current Switch, and that being the OLED as an example, cannot, mm-hmm. cannot do anything to upscale, even if the dot can. The yeah. – Console cannot upscale from 720 to 4K. It just won't do it because that's the big thing. Remember, it's it's upscaling from 720, not yes, mm-hmm. not from 1080 to 4K. I mean, lots yeah. of things no, no, scale up. You know, the Xbox One S, I believe, is upscaling. It's not native 4K, so okay. you've you've got those upscaling uh, sort of things inbuilt. But even if you have a look, and I think. Nintendo are going to go more online as well because they've got a few games right now that are only available on the cloud um, and they're terrible. But yeah. the Switch dock now has inbuilt Ethernet. Why did they do that? 
Yes, mm. it does. Yeah. 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 Well, the GameCube had inbuilt Ethernet, just so we all remember. But but why did why did the original Switch dock not have it? Yeah, I know because Nintendo are weird and they like to not think about. No, but you know what I mean. Stuff. Like there's there's. I think t- that they will introduce they, more cloud hands. Yeah, I think they think about everything. That's mm-hmm. what I think. Okay. That's why I'm saying I think there's a lot in the dock that tells us about what's to come. That's my. Well, they're bringing one out in um, Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. Cloud is coming out soon. Yep, I agree. When that was actually announced just before the OLED was released. Mm. And yeah, we did mention that maybe, hopefully, we can play Kingdom of Hearts on our Switch. But even then, we can only be docked, though. Yes. So, yep. which kind of defeats the purpose of having a Switch in the first place, being that hybrid take it to bed with you type of console. Mm. But, yeah, it's possibly just the beginning for a cloud library on the Switch. Mm. Yeah. I agree. I mean, I, I do think so. it is and way I too. Run well. I yeah. think it's way well, too early for they Nintendo. They, well. haven't, they, they haven't invested in their online network at all, no. as far as I'm concerned. No. And nope. unless no, they're hiding the something. Podcast. If you're interested in the, the online console wars, our yeah, gripes. Yeah, we went a lot more in depth into it in the first one. Yes, I think. Sorry, Dan. <laughs> I think they, yeah, they really need to do a lot of work there. And if they don't, and they keep pushing the cloud stuff because it's cheaper for them uh, in some ways, I think that's what's. I think that's going to shoot them in the foot. Even the Xbox. Cloud gaming stuff is not there. Like even yeah. Microsoft stuff is not there, and that's all running on Xbox Series Xs. What the yeah. hell is Nintendo going to do? They don't have yeah. the infrastructure. They don't have anything compared to Microsoft, and Microsoft's is is average. Mm-hmm. Right now, it's good, right? But if if you wanted to compare it to the Xbox Direct, it is average. So oh yeah. What the hell is Nintendo? Now, Nintendo don't need as big a hardware, but it's nah, not going to happen. If they, if they, oh, if they keep pushing the cloud gaming. Because their hardware is smaller and less powerful. So a lot of companies are forced, if they want their game on Switch, they have to bring it cloud-based. Mm. They just don't have another option. Well, that's what happened with Kingdom Hearts. They couldn't. Yeah put it on a cartridge or the e-shop or anything like that. They had to do it via the cloud. Yep. Which is unfortunate, especially because the Witcher is on there natively. Come on. Yeah, but like Witcher, it's, it's a pale They, they had to, comparison they had to compress that character. thing. Yeah. Like, but yeah. it's impressive that it's on there in the first place. I'm just saying. Yeah, it is, it is, it impressive is very impressive. I just, it means I can play the Witcher on the Switch if it was through cloud. There's no way in hell we'd be able to play. Our internet connection is just not good enough. Mm. I'm surprised we can even do these podcasts. Our internet connection is that bad, you know? <laughs> so. uh, yeah, I think, I, I don't know. I, I'm still up in the air about Nintendo. If, the, if they do push this cloud gaming stuff, I think it's going to shoot them in the foot. They, If you're going to be doing it, you need more control over the servers. I mean, Warzone yes. went to absolute crap when Cold War came out. Uh, as an example, and modern warfare and all, all that sort of stuff, and now Vanguard's coming out. It's literally going to yeah. go, you know, without them having access to that, like, you know, Halo Infinite, as an example, is, pretty, is all on Microsoft. So it is going to yes. run fantastically well. I mean, you can get it, you can also get it through Steam, et cetera, et cetera. So anything Microsoft? Yes, I think it's one of those things where you really need to, well, where Nintendo really needs to think it, think it through and not make a move before they're ready to just for the sake of making that move. The, yeah, Switch, the Switch wasn't designed to run these games, so don't do it. Oh, yeah. Stick exactly. with what you originally innovated the console to do because that's what it's doing well at. It is fantastic. Yeah, it does it really well. 100%. Exactly. Like. Yeah. Anybody well, who owns a console control. should also own a Switch. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. If you if you have ever been on a train in your life, get a Switch. That's just 
that's how I feel about it. And like the amount of times where Laura and I are like, oh, I'm tired. I don't want to sit on the couch anymore. Let's go to bed and continue playing games. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. How good? How cool is that? We it's don't have really to, good. Yeah, we don't have to switch from our PlayStation Two to our Game Boy Advance anymore. We don't have to play two separate games. We can just pick the thing up out of the dock. And I think I think most people, including the investors of Nintendo, want to see a Switch Two, a yeah. Game Boy to Game Boy Color, or even a Game Boy Color to a Game Boy Advance, rather than. A whole uh, new one. Yeah, rather than to a whole new gimmick. Yeah, we I'm not done with gimmick. the Switch no. yet. We yeah. don't want a new gimmick. We don't need a Wii U or we don't need a 3DS, uh, 3D Switch. Uh, maybe That would I be know. very Switch cool. Switch 3D. Though, I, I, I don't know what they're going to do, but headaches. it doesn't need to be innovative. It just needs to be more powerful and better, basically. Better hardware, better mm-hmm. software. Just really Better graphics. Keep, just keep releasing good games and you'd be right. Keep the releasing formula. Releasing Mario Kart. It'll sell millions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at the moment, actually, talking about Mario Kart and what they're doing, we're, we're actually releasing it in a, a day or two. But they're- you're Getting act- Mario Kart on the low-grade gamer. Uh, no, we've already got Mario Kart, but what they're doing is with brand new Nintendo Switch consoles at some locations, it's only with the Neon- and it's only with the yep. or, original Switch, so not the not the OLED stuff. You actually get Mario Kart and three months worth of online subscription for free with oh. with your purchase. So that's the expansion something- oh, cool. pass subscription or just the standard. No, I think it's just the standard because it's only three months. The expansion yeah, pass yeah. has to be. Oh a year. yeah, it has yeah. to be. A year. So right, you're so right. That so, is a very good deal. Yes. Yeah. Because it's it's awesome. from my understanding, I haven't had a good look at it, so you know, touch wood. I don't know, whatever it is. It is a bad deal. Don't blame us. Yeah, uh, that's. I, I'm pretty sure JB Hi-Fi, as an example, already have that live now, and ours is going live in a couple of days. So oh, nice. Christmas but, is coming up, everybody. Yes. Mario Kart is a fail safe too. If you have mm. a Switch, it is the deal. It the is the downloaded games. version though. It is the downloaded that's version. That's all right. One I mean, of the that's... first games you can get on any Nintendo console is Mario Kart. Yeah. yeah. Your friends, you know, you're going to tell your friends, I have Nintendo, and they're going to be like, do you have Mario Kart? Let's play some Mario Kart. Yeah. That's what they do. That's what yeah. friends do. Want to play Mario Kart all the time. <laughs> Everybody does. Yeah. So, yeah, great deal. Great. Go, go check it out, Low Grade Gamer. In two days. In two days. Into this, we've got we've One got day. other we've got I've got five thousand products I need to list in the next three right. or four days. Well, Ooh. you better make sure that that's one of them, otherwise people are going to be disappointed. I'm excited. You told us on your podcast it would be there. And yeah, I know. I mean, I actually, <laughs> actually, I lie. It's four thousand nine hundred ninety-four because I've done six of them. Oh, that's okay. Swedish oh, rounding good. system. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Six. That's a good start. Yeah. I feel it's good. Better than four. It is. <laughs> yeah. it is. I feel good. I feel good. Yeah, I've actually nice. got to go through each individual game, though, and make sure that it is obviously compatible for us Aussies and yeah. uh, the New it's Zealanders the over the ditch because uh, it's a bit, there's a bit of ambiguity there. I'll say that with um, some suppliers and game keys. So that's why. We try and do extensive testing beforehand just to make sure that you know our customers aren't gonna purchase the game and, and not be able to play it straight away because that's that's bull. Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. The worst thing that could happen. Hundred percent. So I thought while we have gone over on podcast a little bit again in terms of our time. I wouldn't mind because, especially because if we uh, leave it another week, we're going to definitely be behind. But I thought we should be talking about the slobs fiasco. Mm-hmm. Mm, slobs. Yes. Streamlabs OBS for the uninitiated. uninitiated. Yes. So if, if you're a streamer, you use pretty much, it, realistically, it's stream elements or it's uh, stream labs. 
They've yep. dropped the OBS title, so Stream Labs OBS or Stream okay. Elements, uh, or there is a cloud version called Light Screen, I think. Light Screen or Light View. So Light Screen, I think. Yeah, I think it's Light Screen. Yeah. Huh. So the the big big thing happened where Slobs released their cloud version of Light Screen. And when they released it, their landing page was identical. Even the wording mm -hmm. was pretty much identical to light screen. Even the reviews. Yes. And it was like, I, I thought it was funny because light screen came out with a tweet um, that said, you know, that, that friend or something like that, where you're asked to copy their homework and just say, can you just change it a little bit? Yeah. yeah, and they had theirs next to next to Streamlabs OBS, and it was like mm -hmm. exactly the same except Streamlabs had different colors. So yep. that that was the big controversy at the start, where a lot of people really started to push back. Now, I, I'll probably explain a little bit about Streamlabs OBS and Stream Elements, just just for those that def definitely don't know what we're talking about. It's basically a program that allows you to stream whatever it is you're playing to Twitch, YouTube, Facebook gaming, or even do uh, recordings and that sort of thing. So that's, that's the idea it's, behind the software. Niche program. Yes. Sure. But I think OBS is also used for a whole bunch of other uh, hmm. things. As, as an example, I use OBS as a virtual camera. So yes. my, my webcam is virtually run through OBS and that's because I can add a few more things in and take things out and blah, 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 which I have not done. <laughs> but I have added in my Mario here. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Very cool. Mm -hmm. For those of you mm -hmm. watching the podcast. Yes. He's got a cool Mario. Mm, he does. The cool little dude. Um, <laughs> I can't wear green shirts anymore. <laughs> yeah, don't wear don't wear green. Um, My chair would and your headphones. Oh, you're yeah. right. Yeah, we could never do that. Yeah, no, you, you could get a blue that. screen though. Oh, okay. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, and then just tell the program that it's blue because yep. it works off RGB. Red, green, oh, blue. Cool. For those of you that don't actually know what RGB stands for, and you just keep buying RGB related things, so. <laughs> I do too. So you smoke. <laughs> yeah, my, my computer at home is like a bloody Christmas tree going off. Daughter loves yeah, it. Yeah, Just too. keeps changing the, the colours on the keyboard, changes the colours on the desk. Uh, we don't know how that. to do it, but our cat sits on our keyboard and changes it for us occasionally. Yeah, somehow our cat knows the key combination to change the colour <laughs> of our keyboard. Uh, but we don't. But we don't, yeah. So oh, well, that's fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> he just sits on it, changes it every time. But on on top of what Streamlabs OBS did with that, OBS, which is the original program. So OBS. Yeah, OBS has been around for quite a while now. Yes. And it's open source. So it's open broadcasting software. So that's, that's OBS. So yep. Streamlabs have taken OBS and basically put a skin over it and mm -hmm. made it easier to use. I'll yes, say Stream over Labs is definitely more accessible. Yes, over over OBS. Now personally I'm an OBS fan if if I did have to pick one, mainly because OBS is significantly less resource intensive on your computer mm -hmm. over Streamlabs. But, you know, there's multiple reasons why they've got a skin over it. They got this and that and blah, blah, blah. But there was a tweet that came out from the original guys from OBS that said Streamlabs actually approached us and asked if they could use OBS in their name. And we asked them not to. And no, as we all anyway. know, it's called they? Streamlabs OBS. So yes. multiple streamers, big streamers have come out and said, if you don't make this right, we're leaving your platform. We're leaving the partnership, yada, yada, yada. So Streamlabs OBS is now Streamlabs and they have removed yes. OBS from their title. Had noticed that just logging in 
recently on the old Streamlabs. We use yes. Streamlabs just because it's it is more accessible. Um, to, it's a bit more streamlined, easier to understand. So it's good for anybody who's looking to start up streaming. We haven't been doing it for that long. We're definitely not experts. <laughs> there are still things we don't understand on the old Twitch. So Streamlabs was what we chose to yeah, go with. I, I think Streamlabs is very, very good for newer yes. streamers and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. I think OBS. You can do more on OBS. Yeah, I, I think OBS significantly, once you understand how OBS works, I've used both. Yeah. And I also use, used to use the stream elements uh, add-on to OBS. Yep. Uh, uh, Something.live, can't remember what it is. Probably yeah. OBS.live. Um, and it is OBS is significantly better once you understand it, especially resource-wise. I like I noticed a 30 40% in decrease in CPU oh, wow. usage. So, okay. yeah, yeah that's it, big. Yeah, yeah, it made a significant difference. It actually made it so that way I could run uh, Super Nintendo streams on a Surface yeah. Pro 3. So, oh, cool, uh yeah, whereas with Streamlabs, it was hanging up, it was causing other issues, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But again, there's multiple reasons for that. So, I just thought we could bring that up today and get your thoughts on it, being the fact that OBS is open source. So anybody can grab the, the file and, and use it. The same, same as Google's Android operating system. That is also open source. And you'll see companies like Samsung, HTC, for those of you that remember when HTC, HTC oh, were good. Yeah. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't heard that name in a long time. Yes, they used to be fantastic. HTC One X, oh, yeah. probably one of their best handsets ever. But you got companies like Huawei, Oppo, a multitude of others mm -hmm. that have manipulated this software and changed it for their user base. Now, yeah, of course. Streamlabs have obviously done that. Yes. Do you think them using Streamlabs OBS is necessarily a bad thing? Or do you think it brings attention to those that don't really, that are learning, as an example, do you think it brings attention to the fact that OBS is a thing? Because that's what I've been thinking about. Yeah, well, I think the fact that they asked them if they could use the name and then they said no. They probably yeah. shouldn't have used the name yeah, to begin bit, with. That bit, I agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I mean, well, when I was like starting up the stream, I just kind of like you Google, like you look up what sort of like streaming software or whatever you should use. And then it always comes up with, the, with those options regardless. Yes, OBS and Streamlabs. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, they're, they're, they're the two first ones you Google. So you should. You should be able to find both. Yeah. And you should know that both exist. Without them having to put the name on it. Because then it just makes everybody think that they're like affiliated I with each other. I thought that they were. Mm -hmm. But yeah, then they're not. Yes. That's yeah. the biggest issue, isn't it? The fact that people think that they're affiliated. Mm. It's, uh, I I don't even know what it's like. I can't even think of an example in, in any other type of business model that's the same. It's unethical mm. at bottom line, in, in my opinion. They, they shouldn't have done it. I think open source code is super important for progression in technology, as we were talking about earlier. That's how it happens. Uh, like the seatbelt, Volvo, uh, created the seatbelt and said, hey, everybody should use this because it's going to make cars safer. You know, it's yep. essentially the same idea. Um, it's going to make the program run better or it's going to make things safer or better, whatever it might be. And that's important and that awesome. Good on OBS for doing that. And I, I think that's fantastic. But to take advantage of that is a whole nother kettle of fish. I think hmm. that's where it kind of, the, that grey line, the grey area kind of exists. 
And I've seen a lot of streamers, even small streamers, go off it. Mm. I've, we're part of many Discord servers and all of the streamers that run those are like, if you care about ethical business practice, then maybe consider what Streamlabs have been doing or have done rather. Mm. They're trying to fix it now, but only because it's come to light. Yeah, and they sort of like yeah. admitted it with their website as well. Even like, like we were saying before, it was totally copied even down to like the reviews at the bottom of the page. And they even said, they're like, yeah, like our bad. We just like used it as a template and it was meant to yeah. be changed it later on. But then they place. just like forgot. They forgot. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, there's big, yeah. huge. Sorry, we, we copied and pasted. Copied and pasted, but like it's not like I've made a website before. Yeah, yeah it's not hard to not copy. Yeah, and paste. I've, I've done one before too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Wait, what's that called again? Yeah, what is uh, that called again? Oh, that home for passionate gamers. <laughs> no, it doesn't doesn't ring a bell. <laughs> ooh, ooh, that hurts. <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Make sure you check Straight it out. To the back. I'm gonna have to check it out after the stream. I think. Well, yes. I am after the new 5,000 products or, yeah, oh, sorry, 4,994 products. Go <laughs> like. to add. Yeah. Uh, check that out oh, next week. What We're a nightmare. Hold you that. Next week, we'll be asking you how many you've got left. I would have done another three. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 4,984. 4, oh, oh, another I'll give 10. that a go. I'll make sure I yeah, do another I'm giving 10 you a bit minimum. Of, yeah. Uh, I incentive. believe in you. I Thank can see Laura trying to do math there. For yeah. <laughs> I was just trying to. <laughs> How much is it? 84, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How much is it going to be? I was just using my premonition skills. You know, I was really just uh, viewing the future. That's what the. Oh, that's what that. The dot, dot, dot well, expression was. I see. Uh -huh. <laughs> so uh, on the whole uh, ethical OBS thing, just to put you guys on the spot because it's fun for me. Are you guys? Are you guys dropping uh, Streamlabs? Well, I was thinking about it. I mean, at the beginning, uh, <laughs> when I started the stream, I downloaded Streamlabs because it was like you know the easier version to grasp and understand. But now that we've been doing it for a while, and the fact that OBS uses less CPU power and stuff, it sounds like it's probably like a better option, to, doesn't it? Does have we dropped it? No, we haven't. Not at this stage, no, but I have considered it. We are it. very busy people. <laughs> um, we essentially work seven days a week when it comes to content creation. We literally woke up, started streaming today, had something to eat, jumped straight into this podcast. I'll be editing the podcast. No, sorry, Laura will be editing the podcast while I cook dinner. Then we're going to film a YouTube video and tomorrow we're going to be editing said YouTube video. So there's, there's a lot of work to do. <sighs> In regards of setting up OBS, I'm, I'm pretty sure we've got it. it. I'm pretty sure I downloaded both at the beginning, though, we, and we I do. don't they're think I there. uninstalled it. So. No, the, it is on the computer. It is there. They're, they're, uh, just just I so just you know, there is an import time. feature. There you go. There you oh. Go. Mm. So I think. Easy. Easy peasy. I think we should check it out and give it a chance. Yeah, for sure. what I'm trying to say. I, I think I, OBS is significantly hard. harder to. Not not okay, not harder to grasp, but Streamlabs you could probably stream in four minutes as an example. Like you, you don't need to worry about overlays and that sort of thing as much because you can sort of download those from the Streamlabs store, basically. Yeah. Whereas OBS doesn't have that ability. Uh, which is sort of where Stream Elements comes in and, and sort of saves yeah. the day. Because again, sure. like the big difference there is Stream Elements actually pulls it from the cloud rather than from the computer. So again, using less CPU power. And because an no, overlay doesn't really need that much. So no. uh, I could definitely understand your point though, especially with everything that we all have on the go. It is an absolute nightmare to change from one to the other. Especially if it's yes. not your day job. Like, if it's your day job, it, oh, yeah. you, you could move that. on it a lot quicker because it's 100%. like, okay, I've got to do something. Yes. Bang. Yep, mm -hmm. and it's done. 
I mean, I don't know if anybody remembers switching over from Internet Explorer to Mozilla Firefox and then <laughs> from Mozilla Firefox to Chrome. That's a big enough pain in the ass. And you yes. literally just type in web addresses at the top. <laughs> but <laughs> it's a big pain. So 100%. something like Streamlabs and OBS is, yeah, look, it is a bigger pain. It's something we definitely am going to get around to, mm. at least look into. But for now, it's just... It's, I hate to say it's more convenient because it's really people should stop doing things for convenience. It's, it's part of the problem with this world at the moment. But yeah, I think that's the biggest yeah. thing with everything though is Streamlabs have made it convenient. Yeah, exactly. And that's why we chose them to begin with because mm. it was more convenient, easier to understand, um, more accessible for people that have never done it before, for beginners, for noobs. Yeah, yes. it's the noob OBS, isn't it? That's what they should have called it. Not straight. Yeah, they though. should have yes. just called it the noobs. <laughs> noobs OBS. <laughs> I, I was a big fan of Touch Portal when I was streaming. So my uh, and OBS, the standard OBS works significantly well with Touch Portal. So for those of you that don't know, uh, Touch Portal is similar to a Steam Deck, Stream Deck, or Steam, Steam Deck. deck. I think it's a Steam Deck. Which basically Steam. means you've got a deck in front of you, push buttons and shit happens. Yeah, and it so does be, things. Yeah. yeah, but you can actually do that with Touch Portal. You can download it for free on your mobile okay. phone and actually use your phone to control what's going on. That's actually what I do a lot of the time in this podcast in the background. If I do need to make any changes to my OBS, I can actually use Touch Portal to do that. Um so that's a big thing. Jump on Touch Portal. I'm a huge fan of Touch Portal. You can even use it to do many other macros and other bits and pieces. Very cool. Yeah, we didn't know it existed, so it's definitely something we'll have to look into. Yeah. And that runs with OBS but not Streamlabs. Is that what you were trying to say? Yeah, I, I believe it works with Streamlabs. It's just harder to get it up and running because Streamlabs have their own which they charge you for. So you download the app, they charge you per month. Whereas Touch ah, Portal- subscription. Another yes. subscription Surprise. sneaking Another in subscribe. there. Whereas Surreal. Touch Portal is, I think, $25 once off oh. if, if you want to use the paid features. Yes, okay. There but is you, a free could, version you could literally get away with the free version unless you wanted to do some fancy stuff like I used to on my Twitch channel when I was running that and streaming. Every time I made a mistake, I used to have – no, wait. I might say that one because uh, I didn't make mistakes ever. Every time, <laughs> every time I did something really good, I had Goku powering up so I could push a button and Goku would power up. Yes. So then, I, then, I, then I felt good, you know, like – yeah. <laughs> I felt super sad. It's a lot easier than going on clicking on your point redemptions and redeeming your own point redemption or, or whatever it might be. Yes. It's a lot easier. Yeah, you can just push a button. Click a button. And yeah. it does it does cool stuff like sound effects and camera zooms and all that type of stuff. Does that yeah. is that is that yeah. part of the free version or the paid? It, you can literally do everything on the free version. It, you're just limited by how many pages and how many apps oh. you have per page. So I think you can get two pages for free yep. plus. Not, not bad. I, I think it's 100 buttons per page. Okay. Yeah. That's a lot of buttons. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I bought the paid version just to get started at least. Oh, 100%. I bought the paid version because of just how good it was. And I felt yeah, the developers the support. earned, earned yeah, the money. Absolutely. And I, I that's had it running if you enjoy on something, old. spend money on it, guys. Yeah. You've heard it here. It's in, even if you don't necessarily need it, the people that develop that software or hardware might need it. Yeah, they've worked really it. hard and, and I think they did yeah. it. They, they, and they make sure that it works on old devices as well, which I think is key. Oh, it's nice. So it's, as an example. Everyone has the new RTX 390 or a PS5. Yeah, but I think it's more about using your spare phone or your spare tablet. Like I, I have it running on a Nexus 7 from 2012. Okay, That's, there you go, yeah. 
that's what I have it running on, and it works. It's the only app that actually works well on it, to be honest. Everything else oh, is stuffed. Oh, cool. Google stuffed up big time with that the memory. Hey, that says a lot about it, doesn't it? If it's the only app that works, then it seems all right by me. Mm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so OBS definitely has its advantages. Mm. Is, yeah. is basically the moral of that entire tangent. Yep. Yes. Is that OBS has many advantages over Streamlabs. And Streamlabs did a bad. Yeah, and they did. They did, they did a naughty. Bad. Just yep. because it's more accessible. And look, I, I don't think you should be necessarily turned off streaming if you're new to it or trying to get into it or wanting to get into it and you look at OBS and find it extremely daunting. There's a lot of YouTube tutorials and stuff that you can watch to Well, I was gonna say just use Streamlabs. If if you if you find OBS too daunting, don't feel like you need you have to use it because all this stuff went on and whatever's happening like don't don't let us tell you what programs to use is what i'm trying to say if you find yeah. streamlabs yeah by all means use streamlabs to be Just fair take into account what's been happening before you make that decision maybe it's worth putting a little bit of extra time and effort in to learn how to use obs first to be fair on streamlabs they did I mean, yes, it, after it came to public light and they got crucified, blah, blah, blah. They did fix it quicker than any other company fixes things. Like if you have a look, like just like we were talking about earlier with Rockstar, they came to yeah. the party really quickly. Streamlabs really dropped everything quite quickly to change. And the people mm -hmm. that are working at Streamlabs today are not necessarily the people that were there when it started. So the people that are awesome. pumping in the hours and working really hard to make things work. And again, this is an advocation for Streamlabs. That's it's not that at all. But no, 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 no. what it is is I think compartmentalizing different aspects of things. And I think that really if you remove the emotion from it, mm -hmm. which I think sometimes we need to do in life is remove the emotion from our decisions Absolutely. i think there are people at streamlabs that were probably pretty devastated that to learn that because they wouldn't have yeah been. yeah absolutely yeah. no 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 it would so, have been the couple of dudes who messaged obs and said that and received the reply i doubt everyone at the company would know 100 yeah. yeah so don't blame the little guy exactly that's where i was don't going with that fine. don't crucify 100%. the developer sometimes if they don't yes, deserve it exactly. exactly sometimes they do but yeah they, oh, yeah they might they might not so yeah i think i think that's a good note to end on you do whatever you feel is right and whatever is easiest or best for you uh if you can remove emotion from it then by all means i mean there's a lot of musical artists out there that have done a lot of questionable things or made uh, made some choices that you may not agree with who make really good music. Mm. And you might enjoy their music despite not agreeing with their opinions or enjoying what they have to say. S same, same deal, you know. If you enjoy using Streamlabs and you find it easier and you're really intimidated by OBS... By all means, stick to Streamlabs. If you found Streamlabs business practices crap, by all means, switch over to OBS. Yeah, and Whatever. as Laura was saying earlier, there's so many YouTube videos tell teaching you how to do it as well. So uh, I think that's one of the key things as well is just watch a bit of YouTube or even go yep. to some kind of gaming uh, and watch them at Twitch, and I'm sure they'd be happy to answer any questions if you do have them 100%. Absolutely. absolutely we're always there to help the little guy that's for sure so it's important awesome well thank you very much nice little bit of a shameless self-promotion at the end there appreciate that one it's been fun as always dan thank you so much for joining us mm -hmm. thank we'll you. be back here next week as promised like clockwork week after week we love and appreciate all of you guys for listening. Don't forget to check out thelowgradegamer.com.au 
Don't forget to check out Some Kind of Gaming on YouTube and Twitch. And stay tuned for next week's podcast. Mm -hmm. See you next week. See you later. Hashtag where is Roland? Yeah. (laughs) Roland, can you come join us next week, please? Special guest Roland next week. Bye. (laughs)